Today we are going to talk about benzodiazepine. This is extremely important that you understand the side effect of this medication before you start this medication. Are these medications safe? Well, to answer this question, it will depend on many, many factors. The first thing that you need to realize is that not everybody responds to a medication the same way. In other words, some patients might actually develop severe side effects from this medication. Some of them know. Those medications, the benzodiazepines, bind to the same receptor as alcohol in the brain. Think about what alcohol does to you. The alcohol relax your body, your brain, your body. Similar In a similar way as benzodiazepine, which is, both of them actually, are depressant drugs. Okay, so it slow down the communication between your brain and your body. Different from other type of drugs that are stimulants, such as cocaine and amphetamine. They cause the opposite effect. Physician has been prescribing benzodiazepine for many years, since 1960. I'm currently prescribing only during specific situation three of them. Lorazepam, which is Ativan, Clonazepam, and Midazolam inhale. And I will tell you when I, what, what I mean with specific situation. What are those specific situations? The first one that comes to my mind is when you have a patient with severe REM sleep behavior disorder. These are patients that they are acting out during sleep. They're punching, kicking, moving a lot, screaming, having a vivid, unpleasant dream. You see this a lot in patients with Parkinson and multiple system atrophy and also Lewy body dementia. The first choice when you want to treat those patients is melatonin. Good doses of melatonin, five to 15 milligrams, one hour, two hours before bedtime, at the same time, always, always, always. If that doesn't work, which is very common, uh, actually more common that it's basically the rule and not the exception, and the problem is severe enough that the patient is falling, is falling from the bed, um, having trauma from those uh, uh, events, then this is a case that you might need to use clonazepam. Another reason to use clonazepam is when you have a patient with what we call tardive dyskinesias. I have a video about tardive dyskinesias if you want to have more details about this condition, which is pretty common. So you use clonazepam when you cannot use the first choices. What are the first choices? Well, Austido, Ingresa, and Tetravenacin. And also, uh, in my opinion, I, I prefer to use uh, Amantadine uh, before trying uh, Clonazepam. But Clonazepam is another choice when the symptoms are severe enough that, that, the, that the patient is getting affected in terms of function. It could be even social function. Another reason to use clonazepam is when you have a patient with severe jerks. Jerks, no tremors, jerks. We call that myoclonus in medical terms. And other medication that, that should be first choice, such as levateracetam or Kepra, and Depakote or valproic acid are not working well. So those patients, when the function, remember, function is getting affected, then you, and those medications that I mentioned before are not working, then you can use clonazepam. Keep in mind, that it's very important to keep the lowest dose possible in all of these uh, situations. Another time that I use benzodiazepine and this time, I'm talking about lorazepam, is when you have a patient with frequent panic attack. Frequent panic attack. Especially during the beginning of the process, that you need something to work fast 
while the medication, the, the main medication start kicking in. When I say the main medication is something like Soloft, it takes time to work. And those patients need something during the first two weeks, three weeks, but no more than four weeks. Another reason or another situation that I use a benzodiazepine is when you have a patient with history of epilepsy. I'm talking about the use of midazolam inhale, which is a relatively new medication. But this is a medication that can save the life of the patient. When you have a patient with epilepsy who is having a seizure for five minutes, I always tell patients four minutes, and and uh, the family is seeing that you can use midazolam inhale and you actually can save the life of this patient because if you allow the seizure to go over five minutes, you might end up having what we call a status apolepticus, which is a life-threatening situation. That's another situation that, you, that I use benzodiazepines in the outpatient setting. Remember, Benzodiazepine should be used for no more than three or four weeks. There are always exceptions to, to, to this rule. And it's for in my in my case, for example, is when when you have a patient with severe RVD, REM sleep behavior disorder, that they cannot type themselves, they cannot sleep in a sleeping bag, they cannot sleep on the floor by themselves. So and and safety is an issue, obviously. That's why they are trying to do this. And the only thing that works is the use of clonazepam. Uh, in that situation, then you it just raise some benefits. So at least the majority of the patient that I have, they don't go over one uh, milligram of clonazepam. I can count with my hands with my hand. Uh, I have a few patients who are taking two milligrams, but otherwise the majority of them 0.5 milligram at night, approximately one hour before bedtime at the same time. Now let's talk about the most important part of this video. Why you have to be careful with this medication? Why you have to avoid these medications as much you can? And I, I, this is the list of the most common benzodiazepine you will see here, okay? There are many reasons for you to avoid this type of medication. I'm going just to tell you the most important reason. Otherwise, we, we are not going to have the time. It might take two days to tell you all the side effects. I'm not kidding. There is a lot of uh, side effects from this medication. The first thing that you need to know is these are dangerous medication. That's why they are controlled substance. Uh, in my opinion, way worse than marijuana. In other words, there are plenty of reasons to be classified as a controlled substance. Number two, benzodiazepines might cause dose dependent, what we call interrogate amnesia, which means that you are not going to be able at good doses. I mean, you need to take a good doses, high doses. You are not going to remember anything or what happened during that period of time. Okay, you it's gonna be difficult for you to learn new to learn new things. Which means that if you have a patient with already has a baseline memory issues, might not be a good choice to use this type of medication. So, which means that if you want to be smart, if you want to learn new things, this is not a medication for you. Because this medication, especially at higher doses, because dose dependent effect might affect your memory. Number three, and this, this one is very important because there are many people that also drink alcohol. And remember what I told you, alcohol and benzodiazepine goes to the same receptor, GABA receptor, GABA-A to be more specific. So if you add alcohol to the equation, the side effects 
are worse, okay? And if you add opioids, narcotics, even worse. Now, I'm not saying that narcotics and opioids go to the same receptor, but all of these drugs or medication, they are depressant. So they might actually cause something very bad that is decrease the respiration, okay? So this is a very, very important. When that happens, you can have what we call in medical term hypoventilation, so decrease your respiratory rate, leading to accumulation of CO2, and that actually could be a life-threatening situation. So you have to be careful when you mix benzodiazepine with other substance, especially if the other substance goes to the same receptor. Another reason, reason number four. Remember that I say that benzodiazepine is a depressant, right? So this actually might lead to depression in susceptible patient, which means that if you have depression, the use of benzodiazepine might not be a good choice. Obviously, there are some exceptions to the rule. And there is a controversy about if benzodiazepine increase the risk of suicide. Uh, a lot of controversy about that. Many, many uh, experts have different opinion about this specific topic. Reason number five to avoid benzodiazepine is the risk of addiction. That's a big one. Addiction especially when you are using the short-acting benzodiazepines such as what we call Alprazolam or Xanax, okay? Xanax is actually a, a street drug, uh, very potent, but short-acting. So, which means that the probability of becoming addicted with, with this medication specifically, with the short acting are higher. But at the same time, the probability of having withdrawal symptoms are higher with the short acting medication such as Xanax or Alprazolam. Another reason to avoid this type of medication. So there is something in medicine that we call um, tachyphylaxis or Tolerance. So, which means that basically you take a medication, you feel the effect, but with time, the receptors get kind of numb. So, which means that you need more of the medication to make you feel the same effect as before. And this is common in the setting of benzodiazepines. Another reason. And I remember I, I told you before that people react to medication differently. And even though that these medications are depressant, in some patients might cause the opposite, actually. It might cause irritability, aggression, and impulsivity. And this is more common in patients with learning disability and impulse control disorders. Now, if you think, and this is another reason to avoid this medication, is reason number eight. And if, if you think that this medication will help with insomnia, think again. Because yes, it's true that it might help during the first three weeks or four weeks, maybe. Maybe a little bit more than that. But at long term, is not going to help you if you are treating just insomnia, okay? Now, I'm not talking about REM sleep behavior disorder. This is totally different. I'm talking about insomnia. Never, never use this type of medication to treat insomnia, at least not for long term, because it's not going to work, okay? If you have a severe anxiety disorder that you just started having this out of the blue, uh, you turn 50 and now you start having this anxiety disorder, it's okay to use for a short period of time while other medications, more important medications start kicking in and you start with 
cognitive behavioral therapy with exercises, which is the main treatment for these conditions, it's okay to use benzodiazepine. But remember, for a short period of time, your goal is to be off of these medications. This is extremely important. Reason number nine to avoid benzodiazepine. If you have balance issues, this is not a good choice for you. Why? We, because it might affect the balance even more. So normally when you get older, the, your coordination, your balance, your reaction time is not going to be the same as when you were 20, 30s. Is not going to be the same. But if you actually have significant balance issues and you add anything that binds to GABA receptors, such as alcohol, benzodiazepine, you will have at some point a fall. And having a fall can lead to a fracture. And things are going downhill many times. So this is so important that if you have balance issues to avoid this type of medication. Now, another reason to avoid, and this is going to be number 10, is that it might increase actually the chances of you having a car accident in, in the same way as alcohol. It's a dose-dependent effect. So it is, it is actually an effect of the medication and not a side effect. Just to summarize, many patients and actually physicians underestimate the degree of impairment caused by this medication, benzodiazepine. So this is very important that you get educated about the potential side effect because sometimes physicians, providers prescribe this medication and they are not clear about the potential side effects, okay? So remember, if you have one of those specific situations that I mentioned before, I think it's reasonable to try those medications. But try to take the lowest dose possible. This is a very important. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.